Hello, this is John Hillebrandt with GlideFast Consulting, and today I wanted to show you how to manipulate variables using sysids. Um, and what I mean by that is using a system property to manipulate how a particular variable behaves rather than hard coding the sysid. Um, as you can see, I have a ServiceNow access request that I built, and it's got, uh, it's got a variable on here that's not showing on the front end but it is showing on the fulfiller side. And I want to show you here what, I, what happens when I submit this request. So I've got a UI policy that basically hides it on the catalog view. Uh, so the, the end user will not see it. It's basically called fulfiller notes. So I want to fill this out here and show you the behavior. So we have able tutor. Uh, we have a request for location that's auto-populated, and we have add or remove access, add to production, and what's the group name they want to be add, added to? Customer support. Comments, uh, I'm new to the team and need to be added. Okay, and then we order now. And we open the request and the uridum. Um, you'll see a number of variables here uh, that are all editable. Sometimes you will run across a scenario working with clients where they may say, well, we have, we have variables on the task that needs to be editable. And you'll see a lot of times that variables will be editable on the task, uh, but there is an out-of-the-box client script that a lot of clients may still have uh, active because of business requirements where they want these fields locked down at the task level. So I want to show you the task. Um, as you can see down here, you see the fulfiller notes, right? Everything is locked down here. Um, this fulfiller notes, the client wants to have editable. They want to be able to have uh, the group that's fulfilling the task to be able to edit this. Uh, what is actually locking these fields down is a client script called variable editor read only. And this may or may not be active, uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the environments that you work in for clients. Uh, some may be using it uh, because it's a requirement, and you'll see this here. One of the things you can do here, and you may see something like this. So what this does here, uh, this, this basically checks, uh, it declares a variable called fulfill a role, and it checks to see if the user has the idle role. It then checks to see if the cat item, it, it basically gets the value, request item, dot cat item, it dot walks the cat item and grabs the value of that, this is ID. So if, the, if fulfiller role, so basically if this evaluates to true and cat item is this sys ID, then gform dot set read, read only fulfiller notes equals false. So let's try that. Okay, let's go to able tutor again, group name. Let's say need access, member of the team, order now. And you'll notice that this, this particular request doesn't have any approvals. Um, you can set up any number of approvals in here that you, you want to happen before tasks are generated, et cetera. I just wanted to show you how this actually works for uh, manipulating variables in a task. So if you open the task, you'll notice that this variable is now editable. So they, if they want, uh, basically it checks to see if it's the uh, service now access request. If it is, uh, make the fulfiller notes editable. So the user can say uh, granted access, and then close this task, and the rhythm is then closed to complete. However, there is another way to do this because it's always it's not always best practice to use sysids. Actually, it's not best practice at all. You don't want to use hard-coded sysids. You want to try to stay away from that. And there is another method that um, I want to I want to really highlight in this video that allows more flexibility for the admins to to modify when that needs to change or point to another catalog item, for instance. So if we go into these, this client script, and this may, you may, you may come and you may look at this and somebody else may have done this um, and you want to improve it. You want to say, oh, this, we don't want to hard code this ID. So what you can do here instead, and I've got this already fleshed out. And the part I really want to highlight in this video 
is this here. So what we're doing, we're doing the same thing. We're, we're, we're actually setting the field, the variables to read only. Then what we're doing is declaring a variable, checking the user's uh, role, make sure they have idle, uh, declaring a variable for cat item, uh, getting the cat item sys ID. And then what we're doing is we're making an, a glide Ajax call uh, to a script include called get SN access rec property. And the name of the function in that is SN access request prop. And what it does here is it grabs the property and it, it, it runs the function for the answer. And it says if fulfill a role. So basically if the user has idle and cat item equals answer. So if the cat item here, the sys ID of this is equal to the answer returned from the property, then it sets it to read only. So I will show you the script include first. So this script include right here, we can just copy and paste this if it's not already at the top. Okay, there it is there. So we open this up and all this does is it runs a function called SN access request prop and it declares a variable called property and it just goes and grabs the property cat item SN access rec dot prop and it returns the property. That's all it does. So this in turn re sends it back to the, uh, so basically the client script retrieves that information that, that this script include gets in the property uh, and it, it compares the two IDs. So let's take a look at the property value. So if we go to sys properties, a list. And you'll see this property here. Anybody can add a property. It's super easy. You just create a name for it that makes sense. Give it a little bit of a description. Here I have ServiceNow Access Request Sys ID, and we can actually update the ServiceNow Access Request Catalog Item Sys ID. And leave the type to string and have a value. And this is basically the value of the Sys ID. This value is the Sys ID of the catalog item. The whole reason you really want to use this is to allow a little bit more flexibility. This allows admins to kind of be able to update this if necessary without having to update the script. You're not hard coding the sys ID in the script itself. You're actually utilizing a system property. And just a disclaimer, um, this by no means is the best way to do anything or the only way to do anything. There are several different ways around a particular scenario. If you're given requirements there, you may think of a better way. Um, I'm just, basically showing how you can utilize uh, using sys properties rather than hard coding sys IDs into the code itself. So what we want to do here, since we've got this old uh, old script in here right now, let's let's copy the new script. Okay, let's make sure we have everything here. Okay. All right, let's save it. Able tutor. New to team, need to be added to group. Able submits the request. Okay, so we open the request and we open the rhythm. And we open the task. And you'll notice we have the same functionality here. Um, so basically we're doing the same thing, but instead of hard coding the, the, the sys ID in the script itself, it's gathering that information in the sys property and sending it back to the, the client script. And basically it's doing a compare to make sure that the sys IDs match. And if they do, make this variable read only set to false. And that's all there is to it. So basically the, you just wanna create a small Glide Ajax call, calling the script include the function, and then have, a, have basically your function down here will have a little, whatever you need, whatever behavior you need it to do. In this case, we're just, making a field editable. Uh, but that's always good practice to do. The script include is pretty small, grabbing that sys property. Um, so this is, that's one of the ways you can handle uh, um, a variable behavior and a little bit better than, uh, you know, hard coding sys IDs in scripts. So I hope you enjoyed this little tips and tricks video. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.